Alright guys, just a quick guide to water cooling your graphics card. So I'm going to be putting a water block on a graphics card. Um, so the specifications of the water block and the graphics card are um, it's a EKFC 5X0 GTX GW water block uh, and it's a nickel plexi block. So basically that's a full cover water block from EK. Um, and it's a water block that's only just come out. It's for the non-reference GTX 580s. Um, and the particular graphics card that I'm going to be putting it on is the Gainwood Phantom GTX 583 GB edition. Um, so EK has, they're the only company that's done it so far. Um, and they probably might even be the only company that will do it. Um, luckily, they have gone and made a water block for um, a few of the non-reference GTX 580s, such as the 3 gigabyte editions, um, which means that you can have water-cooled 3 gigabyte GTX 580s, which is absolutely awesome because um, I run NVIDIA 3D Surround, and that extra memory is really going to help me out with those high resolutions and also with 3D. So this is actually the finished product right here that you're looking at now. Um, the water box are on the graphics cards, they're in a SLI, the system's up and running, um, everything's going very well. The temperatures are absolutely amazing. Okay, so what I'm actually getting is two degrees above um, ambient at idle. Two degrees, um, and that's an average. Uh, and then load temperatures, it gets up to about 60 degrees um, and my room temperature is actually 35 degrees um, so that's a delta of 25 degrees um, so yeah that's just a basic idea of the temperatures for you and the specifications of what we're dealing with today um, yeah so this this guide can apply to any graphics card water block installation I mean there is certain specifics of each graphics card that you're going to have to, that are going to be different. Um, and those specifics can be found in the, um, in the guide, the manual that comes with the products, um, sorry, with the water block. Um, yeah, well, each water block comes with an installation guide obviously and um, that's where you can find out the specifics for your particular card. Um, but basically, yeah, all the installations are very similar, so you can find out um, a lot from this installation, no matter what card you're going to be water cooling. Anyway, that's enough chit chat. Um, here goes. So first of all, it's just a matter of undoing all the screws um, on the, like from the back of the PCB that you can see here. Um, you know, you can just see a couple of the screws there. All of those, or most of them, have to come out. Uh, it's a very good idea to follow the instruction manual, um, even for experienced people like me who have done this a lot of times. Um, I still follow the instruction manual closely because you need to know, you know, some little details which might be different um, for each card that you do. So, I'll just remove all these screws um, and I'll be back in a second. Alright, so all the screws have been removed. Okay guys, so right there you're looking at the naked PCB without the cooler on it. Uh, the cooler was very difficult to get off. I had to Get a bit ugly with it and actually lever it off which I was not happy about um, but I really had no choice um, because it just would not come off so here's the cooler here here's the bottom of it you can see all the thermal interface material still on there um, so that big black part on the bottom is a big unisync they work very well because they you know spread across the entire PCB and cool the whole PCB but there's all the fins right there and um, the fans are underneath those fins 
as you would have seen from my review I think you can see them just there I think the camera's picking that up so coolers off now what we need to do I'll just um, scrap the cooler leave it how it is I know it's a beautiful cooler but water cooling is the hell of a lot more beautiful so now what I'll be doing is removing all this old all these old thermal pads that you can see and removing all the thermal paste off the actual GPU itself you can see it there it's got thermal paste all over it okay so there's also a GPU reinforcement plate to put on and the orientation of this is extremely important you must follow the manual for this you can see the orientation that I have um, which is obviously the correct orientation so that so you can copy that so this is actually screwed on from the other side before the water block is put on alright so the card is all ready to go it's all ready to have the water block placed onto it so it's got the GPU reinforcement plate on there bolted on and all the thermal pads on the memory and also all the thermal pads on the VRMs so that's all the thermal pads that are needed to up there as well um, and all I need to do now is put some thermal paste on the GPU which is basically the same as applying it to a CPU just a thin layer and uh, just one more little thing EK have improved their mounting system so this is the water block here um, so this is the bottom of the water block that will contact the PCB um, obviously that's right there is where the GPU will contact now you can see all these raised mounts um, I've had to screw them in and it's part of EK's new mounting system because uh, what they used to have is you had to sit those things on there and hope that they would stay there while you're trying to line it up with the holes on the on the PCB and get the screws through at the same time so this is the first time I've used this new mounting system so I think it's going to be the hell of a lot easier and a lot better so I just left one out there so that I can show you um, what it's like to screw them in and the little tool that EK has given you to do that um, you can see all these plates here that's for the memory around there uh, and I think all the VRMs are over there somewhere but I'll just show you the other side of the block so there it is there you can see the cuts on the back of the where the GPU goes for extra surface area beautiful looking cooler it'll look a whole lot nicer when it's on the card so I've just put my finger marks all over it so I'm gonna polish that up um, and get it on the card and I might actually let you watch me doing that okay so I'm just putting that final um, what are they called standoff onto the um, water block so they don't thread in very easily so you've just got to kind of start it and then use the little tool that EK gives you um, to screw it all the way in because it's kind of very tight threaded and you want this not too tight but you know moderately tight because if you ever need to pull the water block off you don't want these to be undoing instead of the um, screws undoing out of these because these have threads in them that's what they're for okay so now the big moment um, you know you triple check everything make sure everything is perfect and then you place the water block onto the graphics card so I've placed it on now I need to flip it over while holding 
it down onto the PCB, keeping that pressure, keeping it lined up nicely, not letting it move at all. So now just starting to put the screws in and um, working my way from the GPU outwards. When, when you tighten them, yeah, you work your way from the GPU outwards. So the first ones that get tightened are on the GPU. Um, and that's so that, you know, the pressure is evenly um, distributed across the PCB and uh, any slack is pushed out to the edges. So there we go. There's a full tutorial in putting a water block on a graphics card. Um, now I move on to the second one. Thanks for watching guys.